here we go. And if you wish afterwards, you can send me an email and I'll, I'll share this. So this is assignment one, what's in your house. So it's level three and it's a basic level three college class in the state technology college that I teach. So English is a subject taught in the curriculum of information technology during six semesters. So it's English one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are 14 students when I did this class, 14 students in the class that they range from 18 to 37, they're night students. And the curriculum goals are general English communication and English for specific purposes in for information technology. Their native language is Portuguese from Brazil. Even though the curriculum in English is English for specific purposes, some classes focus on general English due to the importance of the content, such as there is and there are. And this, once again, the mother tongue has plays a very important role when defining some topics that have to be included in the curriculum. So there isn't the structure in their native language, there is and there are. So that's why I prepared a special class and it is part of most foreign language uh, teaching books. So the objective here, so you have linguistic content, it's oral interaction, practice properly structuring simple present sentences using there to be and parts of the house and items in a house. So it's a mix of vocabulary with grammar here. Uh, they will learn to describe their house and the furniture in each room. Uh, house vocabulary was introduced in English one, so they did have an English one back there. Enabling objectives, students will understand the use. Through related oral activity, students will be able to apply the structure and expand the use of the structure there to be in other contexts, which will come in the next lesson that they're going to be working with graphs then. So I extend. So I always try to make the content, this is English three, when they go to English four, that I will show you then the next activity for English four, they will also use the same structure. So kind of like, you know, re, 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 um, reusing structures that were taught. So I based the lesson on communicative approach, approach um, principles at least, <clears throat> vocabulary and structure are appropriate to the situation, the roles of the speaker and the setting and the register. The topic was selected regarding age, needs, level, and students' interest. So materials needed, the images that I project on the board with PowerPoint, and then the process of the activity. The teacher presents the structure using items in the classroom, for example. So I don't teach the structure at first. Is there a TV in the classroom? Are there any red chairs? Are there any curtains? So they don't, then after they have answered questions and so on, do I, I have posted in their website the theory for there is and there are, and then we develop it. So I, I select some cards. Is there a couch in the dining room? Yes, there is, no, there isn't. So according to the pictures, so I, I put up the image and then is there a couch in the dining room? So no, there isn't and I follow through with some questions. Then the there is pair work, student-student with teacher um, supervision. And what do I do? I, I put the pictures in the classroom so that they have to stand, get out of their seats. So they go in front of one image, they ask questions to one another. It makes a little bit of, their night students, they have worked all day. So if they're seated all the time at their seats, they get really, uh, they don't engage as much as if they stand up, they have to walk from one image to the other. So I, I just, you know, I take a scotch tape and I just paste it on, on the wall, the images, um, and, and that's it. So then follow-up activity. Each student will complete the chart and chooses one room in their houses to describe to the class. So they will make a list and then they will say, in my kitchen, there is a fridge, a freezer, a table, four chairs, and so on and so on. And then the homework is the follow-up activity. 
that they have to complete the chart answering the question. And then this I also paste in, in their, I post in their webs, in their, we have the teams, we use teams for homework. So basically that's it. So you have a, a grammar, speaking activities, images, and the dynamics of how to develop the class. So everything then is explained, follow-up activity, approximate. And you also should give the time for each task. So in this case, it would be five to seven minutes per image they would work on. And then there's a some kind of signal that you tell them to, you know, swap and walk around and move on to the next image. So basically that's it. Uh, you just have to be sure that you find a topic that connects grammar, speaking, images, video. So I have one here that I use a video that I use a TED talk video. Here, the next lesson. Excuse me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Madi. Uh, uh, hello, sorry. Um, I'm disconnected. Sorry for that. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. You're breaking up. Yes, your connection is breaking, Sorry. unfortunately. Oh, yes. Um, I th think now it's fine. It's better I now? I hope so. Okay, so this is the the class that I mentioned that would be then for English four where they work with graphs. Yes. And then yes. They have to go back to the structure of various. Yes, and so now it's better. Okay, wonderful. So I'll I'll send this over to you guys if you send me an email. Because I'm not sure if I can attach it here to the chat. I was trying to find a way, but there isn't any way to like, you know, attach a folder. So uh, Either you can all put your email in the chat box and then I'll make a collective email and I'll send it to you guys. And, you know, feel free to copy, paste and, and use references. I mean, that's the good thing about being in here. We can share. And if you see anything that I may have missed in spelling, punctuation, please, you know that we always, as much as we review, sometimes something may be missing. So if you find anything missing, also let me know, please. So here I give out handout. So everything is explained when there's a video. I add the video, like here there's a video, and then there is a handout, exactly the step I write 10 words related. So what do I do in this case? Um, I learned that when they use their headphones, they watch any video individually, they have their own pace. It's much more productive than you know, playing the video for the whole classroom. Sometimes some will watch with. So because each student has their own pace, principal in the classroom that it's general English and when they arrive at the university, English is part of the curriculum. So I can't really say, okay, your student level one, your level two, they have to follow their semesters as they do in, uh, in, in, in their course, in the regular course. So some students are faster, some are slower. So that allows for students who are quicker, they can work at their pace. The students who are slower can work at their pace as well. So that's something that I've learned through time to allow the students to, and everyone has a, a mobile phone nowadays and, and headphones. So I found it much more productive. And that's about it. So here you can see, this is an assignment for English one, which is telling the time. So there are several levels. All of them Excuse I tried me. to bring. Yeah. Just can I ask about the time of the activity for um, conversation activities uh, that were focusing on uh, listening and speaking? It had to be 30, 35 to 45 minutes. And then for the four skill um, uh, lesson plan, it should be, I don't know, 60 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes. Is there any? That would any be that, that would be correct, because when you work more skills, you have to propose more activities to cover all the skills. So definitely when you're, most of my activities focus on oral. 
do a lot of oral because all of the writing and reading they do on the platform to cut to 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 add up all the hours that they need for English. So in the classroom, I try the most to work oral activities. So that's why my classes are basically 45 minutes. And that's the time that is given to me in, you know, in the slot. So I have two 45 minute classes a week with each group. So that's how. So of course, uh, I have I have to design the classes according to the time that is given. But if you have the freedom and the flexibility to design a class of 60 minutes instead of 45, you would add either reinforcement um, in order to, you know, for additional practice or another skill. Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you. So, of course, the more, uh, the more skills you intend to, to develop, the more time you will need. Okay. So, basically, are there any questions that I can help you guys, you know, that may be, well, maybe now not yet, once you try to develop the activities, questions can pop up. You guys already have my email, right? So I saw Hussein sent his email. The other students who wish to receive this task, please put the email in the chat box because then I will send it over as a, as a group email, okay? So Thank you very much. For today, since we are working together and I, Dr. Siavash asked me to develop with you guys today, IELTS writing. I know that not all of you teach IELTS, but maybe one day you may be a a take the test or even teach. So he asked me to work with IELTS teaching today, and I'm going to share with you guys. And of course, we're open to discussion because there are so many, you know, questions uh, surrounding teaching writing for IELTS. I'm going to present to you what I work with, the structure that I teach. I've been using the structure for many years. The results, my students, they really do get good results using this structure. So the first step I always work with students, it's analyzing and planning. Many students are reluctant with planning because they think it's a waste of time. They have only 40 minutes to develop the task and they're really resistant to take time to plan. However, if you explain and you show them writing an essay for IELTS, you have to follow and include band descriptors. So the band descriptors are the guide. So before we move forward, I'm going to take some time to briefly go through some elements of the band descriptors. And once again, I'm really open to discuss what I'm going to present because I've been using this, but maybe you use a different technique or you have questions concerning it. So the examiner will score the student in four criteria, 25% each. If the student is aiming for seven, 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 seven. However, the student can maybe get eight in task achievement and six in lexical resource. That evens out to a seven. I always encourage students to focus and do their best to learn task achievement because this is one place, one criterion that they can really boost their scores and it allows them some flexibility in the other skills that they may lack. For instance, if they are preparing in the short term, two, three weeks. So we can't really fix grammar mistakes. You can fix only to a certain extent. So then task achievement is the place where they can compensate. Um, and there are some little pointers here that I've been discussing with the students and using, and they have come back to me because every time I get my students come to me and say that they have passed, I do an interview and I record the interview to double check. So when it says here, presents a clear position throughout the response. There is a belief that we should not use personal pronouns in essays. However, for IELTS, since there is this band descriptor, this element, you should use first person singular to show your strong position. Sometimes it's an opinion, sometimes it's a position. And I'll discuss the difference with you further. So, and when it says throughout, 
It means introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion because it's throughout the response. So that's something to consider. You have to present, extend, and support ideas. So the paragraph structures that I'm going to propose naturally includes these elements. So that's what we're going to look into. When it comes to coherence, if we go to six, there's a very interesting point here that says, uses cohesive devices if effectively, but cohesion within and or between sentences may be faulty or mechanical. So what is the mechanical marker? The mechanical marker are the connectors that we teach in general English, furthermore, moreover, in addition, but for IELTS, it will be graded as mechanical because they're very standardized. So the mechanical word, it means here something standard, and we know that it's standard. Furthermore, um, moreover, in addition, so they should use phrases that are equivalent. Another important aspect. So instead of saying furthermore, instead of saying firstly, the major point. So they should avoid these mechanical markers, even though we know that we teach this in, and they learn this in general English courses. When it comes to vocabulary, it says wide range of vocabulary, sufficient range here and here wide range. Then they use, they say less common lexical items. The less common, it's not those crazy words, plethora and so on. It's words basically like prefixes, suffixes. This is what counts for IELTS as less common lexical items. And then awareness of style and collocation. So this, of course, we know that collocations, there is a, a list. We don't expect them to learn all, but you should encourage students to beware of some major topics, for example, environment, crime. They should learn at least five or six collocations to develop their speaking and their writing to add points to it. Here for level eight, it says, Flexibili flexibly. What does it mean, this flexibility? If we consider a word like school, school is a very hard word to find a synonym. Think of a synonym for school. So this is where vocabulary flexibility comes into action. You take words, you put them together, in order to have a meaning, even though in real life, so you could say academic institution. So academic institution is you take words and you do this flexibility, you, you, you use it in a flexible way, but when it, they come together, they have the meaning that you need. Take family, for example. You can say household members. We wouldn't say that, but in order to avoid repetition and to you know, uh, include the, the wide range, this is one strategy. When it comes to wide range of structures, it says here variety and here wide range. What, does, what is the difference here? The variety here, it's going to go with compound and complex. When we say wide range within the compound and the complex, you will vary. Take compound, for instance, compound you have coordinating conjunctions, and then the correlative conjunctions. So if you want to go with a wide range, you would add co coordinating fanboys and the correlative conjunctions. If you want to discuss insubordinate, you would add conditionals if, because in complex sentence here, you were talking about compound complex. So not necessarily varying among the subordinate and among the, the, the compound sentences. Here we would also add, let's suppose using participles as connectors. So that will change your structure. So there's a lot to add here. So these are some pointers that I find important to develop with the students because some students need six, some need seven, some need eight, for example, for teacher license in Australia, they need to get eight in speaking, eight in writing, seven for listening and reading. So it's, it's challenging. 
So let's go back to our structure now. I will share with you guys a video that I find very well developed that explains all these band descriptors. Give me a second. I will grab it right now and then I'll put paste it in the in the chat box because it's really worthwhile. So here we go. So this is the band descriptors task to explain. This video is very nice. So now back to our task. So in this case, we see some people think that the best way to reduce crimes is to give longer prison sentences. Others, however, believe there are better alternative ways of reducing crime. Discuss both views and give your opinion. So the first one is, why do you think that people think this? So that's something to start. What effect would longer prison sentences have on criminals and on society? The best way to generate ideas is asking yourself questions. Every time you ask yourself a question, you come up with an answer. That's an idea that you will use in your plan. Think of a specific example where a longer prison term could have prevented crime. These, the mindset of a student for planning, you teach. You teach the student this mindset. You convince him somehow and as time as he practices, he will learn the value of planning. Then others believe there are better alternative ways of reducing crime. Why do some people think longer terms, longer prison terms are not the solution? What are some other ways to prevent or to reduce crime? And what can be done inside prison and outside prison? So you learn. You teach your student how to ask different questions to generate ideas. The structure that I work with, and in this case, there are two ways to develop this topic. The regular standard four body paragraph, where in the introduction and conclusion, they are very much related. And this is on purpose, it really is, because you will see that by you applying the structure, you do the concept of present, support, extend. So you make a background sentence and then about the topic, but and in the conclusion, you make a broad statement. So this and this, they are connected. So you kind of like paraphrase. Then you summarize the argument, the arguments and your opinion again. So opinion, opinion again is restated. Opinion, opinion. So by doing the structure, you do the position throughout the response, introduction, body paragraph, and conclusion. The first structure that I propose is to discuss the first view. And the writer's opinion will always be in the second body paragraph because then it will naturally connect to the conclusion. If you put the writer's opinion in the first body paragraph, there may be a distance then from the conclusion and the coherence may not be as as well structured. So when you have discussed both views, always guide the student for the writer's opinion to be in the second body paragraph. Another structure that can be used here is So I get stuck here sometimes. So you attach yourself to one view. Another possibility, principally for those students who are aiming for the big nine, don't know why, but some students may want that. It is recommended to step up a little bit. So add, let's suppose a five body, five paragraphs, 
discuss the first view, discuss the second view, and then develop your own view to discuss in paragraph, in the third body paragraph. Now, how do we write the body paragraph? This is the structure that I propose. You make a point, you explain, you cite an example, you write an effect, and then you link. The point is when you present. Explain an example is when you support. Effect is when you extend. And link is to connect paragraphs so they don't seem uh, you know, unstructured and you, you lose coherence. So the link is an important sentence. So what is the task now? In body one, I would like to see if you can identify point, explain, example, effect. So the first sentence, for many, the solution to crime seems to be simple, lock criminals up forever. So that's the statement, the point given. Now we're going to explain why. So why do, why is this a solution? They claim that by removing dangerous people from society, citizens are safer. Now the evidence, indeed, when it comes to murders or violent offenders who show no remorse for their crimes, such as Martin Bryan, a convicted Australian mass murderer, it does seem logical to just throw away the key. I don't know if this is true. Your, your examples do not have to be true. They can be fake to support your point. Now, what is the impact of this? So after you make your evidence, you write your evidence and your statement, you ask yourself this question, what is the impact of this? What is the consequence? And that's how you extend your idea and you produce the effect sentence. Supporters of this method argue that doing so teaches criminals a lesson, protects society and serves to deter others as well. So if we come back here, when you write your point, you will say longer prison sentences reduce crime. Why? Because dangerous criminals will not be on the streets. For example, Martin Bryant, a convicted. So what is the result of this? What is the impact of this? Safer society because the very dangerous and violent criminals are off the streets. So the planning has this purpose for you to connect one idea to the next and make it coherent by asking one question. So you make a point, you ask your question, why? You produce, you explain. Then you produce a fake example or even a real example. And then after that, you ask yourself, what is the consequence? Another way is also to produce a conditional sentence to have variety. So how do you produce the conditional sentence? You ask yourself, if not, so let's go here. Another group, however, feel that extending imprisonment is not the answer and that other methods would be more effective. That's the point. Now I'm going to support this by explaining why. For them, it is more important to treat the underlying causes of the offenses. And if we don't, and if not, if a criminal is addicted to drugs, for instance, simply putting them in prison will not prevent reoffending upon release. So in order to produce a conditional sentence, the question that you ask yourself is if not, or what if? By asking that, that's how you naturally produce a conditional sentence. So planning is going to help organize these ideas when you start writing, you will be able to focus more on sentence structure and vocabulary variety because your mind is not so busy generating ideas, vocabulary, sentence structure. So the five to seven minutes that you take to generate ideas and to plan coherent ideas, in when it comes time to writing, it will be a great benefit. So once again, I would like you now to look at the conclusion and there's, there's a slip in the conclusion. Can you find what's missing in the conclusion? Okay. 
it's a, it's related to task achievement. So the writer's position is not restated, right? That's what's missing. So you, if you look here, I feel, in my view, I agree. So this is the only relative pro, uh, personal pronoun that we can use. We should not use we, you. We should use only I to include the position. So whenever you're going to make an example in our society, no, in society, it's not our. Avoid, so when they say avoid pronouns, it's avoiding pronouns aside from I to make your position clear. So the first person singular you will use in order to express the position. So Excuse here, me. yeah? Uh, uh, the structure that you have for the body paragraph, like point, explain, example, effect, and link, is it, is it necessarily for um, discussion essays or it can be done for advantage, disadvantage, or problem and solutions as well? No, for problems and solutions, then it's the double idea paragraph that I will show you. Mm -hmm. okay, so right. this structure, it's good for, do you agree or disagree? So Does for opinion essay and agree? discussion. Okay. Yeah, so you will use discuss both views. Do you agree or disagree? Sometimes for double questions, depending, uh, let's suppose, is success a measure uh, of, uh, is money a, success, a measure of success? That's one question. How else can we measure success? So then you would, yeah. so necessarily when you have plural forms in your questions, such as advantages, disadvantages, problems, and solutions, you will deal with double idea paragraph. Aside from that, most of the time you will go with single idea paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and another and question is with the, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no. with the you uh, used as a, a general you. When I say, for example, I don't know, if you do something, then, then you will have a chance to do something else. Is this you? Um, should it be used? It should not be used. So if consumers, uh, or because this you is always somebody, it's like people. Who is this you? If you, you the students, so if students, if it's the, the, the citizen, if citizens. So mm -hmm. definitely avoiding and always Another key is to avoid the word people repeatedly because people mm -hmm. usually, these people, they are somebody. They're residents, they're consumers, they're students. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. So then, this is that would be the next step. So, what do I, I kind of encourage the students at the end of the class to take a picture? Then they can write by hand, rewrite by hand. That's very helpful. Record themselves reading the essay. So in, in neuro linguistics, we know that when we when we make when we or when we do an activity in oral. So this by by proposing to take a picture, handwrite, and do oral, you cater several different skills, and by doing so, they will be reviewing vocabulary in a different format, which will help to ingrain. So they will read to copy, then they will speak, and that's how they will be exposed to the same content repeating in different formats. So it, the student that is more visual will have the opportunity, the student that is more auditive will also get the opportunity. So here, before we move on, let me just share. So I usually, when I'm teaching students this topic, I also present to them the paragraph structure with some suggestions of starters. I feel that sometimes for them to get going with the structure, they need a little push. So what is the push that I, I share with them? And as I said, Later on, if you, anyone who wishes to, have, to receive this material, I already have Hussein's email. I'm not sure if anybody else is interested, but if you are.
So then I. So this is the peel, the one that we just saw. So then. And then some starters. So, for example, to make a point for some people, there are those who believe when it comes to some peel. So I give them this little these starter sentences to get them going with time, with practice. They will either adapt to their own style or they will use these because this isn't really a template. Like a, when the examiner reads, he's not going to identify a template here. They're just, you know, starters to help them uh, develop this paragraph in a coherent way without getting stuck, principally for the first, you know, paragraphs that they're going to do applying this method. So now back to our structure. So this is a different topic, and this is the one that uses plural forms. And this one does not clearly ask your opinion. So it will change slightly how the writer will bring a position and not an opinion in this case. So many governments invest a great deal of money in space research. What are the advantages and potential disadvantages of sp spending money on space exploration? So it doesn't really have any question of what is your opinion. So in this case, we're going to focus on position so that we're, we guarantee that the task achievement will be achieved. So you will not say if you agree or disagree that governments should spend or not money. That's not the question, but you will show your position. So this is the, one of the stru possible structures in this essay. I will outline what I consider to be the main advantages and disadvantages. However, I would paraphrase here the main benefits and drawbacks, maybe. So when you, the, you use the structure, I will outline, you are showing a position and not an opinion. You're not saying, I agree, governments should invest in, no, because that's not the question. Then you will go advantages in body one, disadvantages in body two. So since it says advantages and disadvantages in plural, you must discuss at least two points for each. So this is the structure now proposed for double idea paragraphs. The first sentence is an umbrella sentence. It's called umbrella sentence because it will cover, it's a topic sentence that covers the whole paragraph. It informs the reader that two ideas will be discussed. So then it's a set. There are two main points uh, in terms of benefits when governments or authorities uh, invest funds in developing space research. So then, so today we're going to go with two double idea because you also have the choice of writing four single ideas. One advantage, another advantage, one disadvantage, another disadvantage in single idea. But that's not doable in 40 minutes, not for IELTS, I believe. We have to be careful not to list advantages. We always have to remember to ex extend with reasons and or examples. So now we're going to do this together. We're going to plan. So in terms of advantages, what is the first advantage that you can think of to justify you're not agreeing, even if it's other people's view, not your own view, you, you think not. But that's not the question here. What are some advantages? Now we're going to think of one advantage of investing in space research. One idea. So ask yourself, okay, so uh, what would be the benefit is when it comes to the results of space research? What results can we get? Get, get more information about other planets. 
Maybe okay. maybe we will find a place to leave there one one day. Uh, like I said, IELTS is not a PhD thesis. It just has to be reasonable. So yes. So uh, let's suppose in the first point we can say to find uh, maybe a planet to live in in the future, considering that the that Earth may become inhabitable one day. You know, the like that little Wally movie, right? So something like that. Once again, IELTS, you don't need to have any groundbreaking ideas, but you need to be reasonable. So when we consider, oh, something missed here. Hold on, guys. Let me just bring this up. I had included it, but I think I, forgive me, but don't worry. I'll bring it up right away. So here, so this is the plan that I made. So buy products that benefit people, such as sunglasses and medical devices. Here's your idea too. I had the same one, Hussein. Find new planet to live in, could be useful if we destroy earth. Now, what are the disadvantages? Well, money is diverted from essential services. If you take the USA as an example, Lots of money spent on space, but they have there are big social and healthcare problems. And also, second disadvantage or problem is space junk, which can be dangerous and contaminating. So with this plan, they're much better, they have the tools to develop their essay. So if we come here, you will see. Certainly, space exploration can bring about many positive impacts. So the paraphrasing advantage, because advantage is the word that was used, then in the introduction benefits, and now positive impacts. So the variety of vocabulary. Perhaps the most significant ones, ironically, are the byproducts of technological developments. Now, how do you reach this level of vocabulary of technological developments? You can see that none of the words are awkward words. It's just a matter of putting the words together in a way that they are specific for the topic, collocations, technological developments, everyday items such as sunglasses, nonstick cookware, and important medical devices like pacemakers all came about thanks to research and development in the space field. So that's one point. With extension, example, and a, and a result. Here, another plus is the benefit to humanity of finding another habitable planet. Indeed, if we continue to deplete our natural resources and pollute our own environment, the money spent on discovering a new planet or creating livable spaces on Mars, for instance, will be well worth it. This is a typical paragraph of a student. How do we fix this we and our issue? We can be the government. But it's not the government that only depletes natural resources, is it? So, so maybe if humankind, yeah, humankind continues to deplete Earth's natural resources and pollute it or pollute the environment, there we go. So you take using we and our is not recommended at all for IELTS and D. Like I said, only the I is accepted for the position. So an easy way to fix this is transforming this we. Who is this we? Humankind, people. Now, when it comes to the conclusion, if we look at the conclusion, so in the introduction in this essay, I will outline what I consider to be two main benefits that can be gained from spending on such research, as well as some drawbacks of this investment. In the body paragraphs here, it would be quite hard to bring in a position because once again, you're, you're discussing advantages and disadvantages, but in the conclusion, you can definitely restate. Where would you add the writer's 
position here in this conclusion. Can be the beginning after I after the conclusion. I believe space in research. That's it. I believe space research can have. That's it because all of this conclusion is exactly based on what the writer outlined. The writer believes. Once again, it's not the position. He doesn't support the question, but he brings. But the writer brings, and this is a mix. This essay is kind of like a mix. The second body paragraph comes from a student. The third one I wrote and the conclusion comes from another student that I kind of like adapted. So the, the personal opinion is right at the beginning. The, the, the position, even if you say, I believe you're not saying that you agree or disagree that governments should spend or not. It's about the advantages and disadvantages. Okay. So. These are the two structures. Once again, going back to that material that I share with the students to give them that boost, I will show you now how I bring the second body paragraph. So this is for the single idea, now double idea. So the double idea comes here, the umbrella, So now we have a prompt, and these are some starters for the umbrella sentence. There are two main, two clear reasons, two causes, two advantages. There are several reasons. And then when you go to the second body paragraph, there are, however, also some. So nowadays, online shopping is rapidly replacing physical shopping in stores. What are the positives and negatives of this development in your opinion? So the first body paragraph is going to deal with the positives and the second are the negatives. So now we guys are we're going to do an exercise. You can see the timer right here at the top. Five minutes. You try to make that UPP structure and list. List no. Write a point. Write an extend sentence but not the full sentence, just generating the ideas, asking yourself. So what is the first positive idea, first positive point to shopping online? Maybe you don't, you save time. Now, why do you save time? Because you don't have to physically go to the shops, face traffic, something like that. So for five minutes now, I'm going to set the timer. I'd like you guys to try this. And then we will discuss together. I'm also going to make my own plan here so that I can share my ideas. Here we go. If you guys have any questions, please just call.
Okay. So Hussein, what ideas do you have for positive, please? Um, uh, for the merits, as you said, we can save time, can compare prices more easily. There are more options. There are two points. Now there are three points. So you yes. see how, uh, so let's develop one point at a time and not list. So the first point is save time. Why consumers save time? Uh, because they don't have to go to shops in person and I don't know, um, they get a stuck in traffic and maybe to a stand in queues. So here we go. So let's take a look here just for me to show you now what we mean by not listing and effectively developing the, the, the idea. So this is something that it's so automatic in our mind to suddenly start listing and not develop it accordingly to what we should. Let me share this with you guys. So here, we're going to go with the U, P, E, P, E structure. So the first point is save time. So why do they save time? Why? So we need to explain this. Now, in the UPEP structure, it's very common to kind of like, you know, mesh ideas because we need to present, support, and extend. In the peel structure, you have separate sentences to do this. Here you have point and extend only. So somehow you will end up meshing ideas and most likely also using complex sentences and compound. So consumers save time as they do not need, they do not need to go to, to, the, to, to stores. So you're kind of like mixing the point and the explanation in the first sentence. And then you're going to extend how? Well, uh, they can, they avoid traffic. They avoid traffic, right? Then you can make an example that uh, going downtown to shop can take up to one hour in London, if you live in the suburbs. So that would be kind of like the extend you bring in an explanation, you bring in evidence and you explain. So it's kind of like all together. So you say save time because you do not need to go to stores. You avoid traffic in some cities, for example, in London. If you live in the suburbs, it takes one hour to go downtown. So definitely. The second point. You said, what was the second point? Sorry. Uh, the second point was it can compare prices more easily. Yeah, so in fact, they compare their prices. Why? Or how? Because it's easier because you can just move from one side to another in a second and to see the prices. So it won't take time. Is it different online stores? First, with the with the click of the mouse, with a simple click. And here you can even try to compare maybe if it were, if you were to do this in person, it would take you hours and hours, right? Going from one shop to another, once again, or just simply you have already extended. Now think of yourself, what is the, in? you can ask implicitly or, you know, what is the impact of this? 
So when you visit online stores with a simple click. So, so it would be easy to compare prices and to find um, the one you want with the right price. So you compare prices and most likely the impact is that you will even end up saving money, right? Time, time and money. Time and money, there we go. So now you can kind of like wrap up with the two ideas here, right? You can add the time. So the effect here will become very, uh, a strong effect you can include. So you can use uh, therefore, uh, or therefore is a little bit mechanical. So uh, this uh, contributes to not only saving money, but also time. And then by adding the sentence, you have a correlative conjunction sentence. So you add sentence variety. So that's a good place. So I always tell students that when you have double idea paragraphs, you end up meshing two in one. So the first sentence you can do point and explain and the extend sentence is example and effect. Okay, so that's a, a very good way. I also added, and I think you added two, if we could do as a third point, the variety, right? The options. So another point that could be, but once again, so you cannot say save time and money as one point. Save time is one point, save money is another point. And this is where sometimes students, they jumble up and they don't have a clear point and they don't develop, they don't present support and extend one main idea, which is what IELTS is looking for. Okay, what about the negatives now? Uh, any other students? Let me see who's here, Dorothy, Crystal, the negative. What do you have for negatives? One of the negative, maybe the what you get is not what is described. The pictures can cheat. Okay, so the, M, the, the products, the product received is not as the one shown online, right? Uh, why? Because they can use these resources, right? Of uh, Photoshop and so on. Yes. Okay, so then you can ex extend. You can either put the Photoshop idea here or edit. They can edit, right? The edit. And then here, as an example, you can maybe cite the website this and this that when consulted, the majority of the clients complained when receiving the product that it was not the same as shown on the website. So I guess a fake example. In the website, I don't know, um, beautiful girl. The ma majority of the clients who received the products complained that the colors did not, were not the same as shown on the website, the pink, was not a, uh, it was a very pale pink instead of being a vivid pink. Okay, so make it fake, but make it support your point. What would be a second negative? Madi, Crystal, do you guys have any ideas? Dorothy? It can be addictive. You spend too much money buying uh, some unnecessary stuff. You read my mind. That was my point too. Uh, it can become addictive. There you go. Uh, because it's very easy to shop, right? Too easy. Yes, it leads to addiction, right? And why? The ease to shop. Now, and this is something really incredible because it can be like midnight and you can be online and suddenly shop. In stores, you can't really do that. Not it's not easy to, to find a shop open at midnight, right? And the computer learned to push the, the something that you want to your to your screen. Yes, the algorithms. The ads. So you can, yeah, so the algorithms, they, they are kind of like trained, right? The, 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 they, they have trained, the algorithms are trained to suggest products.
So there. So all of, once again, you do not have to have groundbreaking ideas. They just have to be reasonable. That's what I'll say. And then how you develop compound sentences, complex sentences. So if you have the plan, now that you can sit down and focus more on where to add a complex sentence. You can develop the sentence structure because you don't have to, your mind isn't busy developing ideas as well. That's why many times the students do not have this coherent structure. Once again, this paragraph structure helps them. Lead, it leads them to present, support, and extend. Okay. So let's go back here. Ah, there's some great ideas in the chat box. Let me find this. Hold on. Give me a minute. Madi. Okay. So the advantage of online shopping is that we don't leave home and compare prices. It is done more easily and without our without fatigue. So you see here when you say we don't leave home and compare prices, these are two ideas, Madi. You would have to separate them. Point one, you don't have to leave home. Point two, you compare prices. And then the negatives is buying shoes online is a risk because it may be too tight. On our feet, we have to, our buying clothes in person should be, they may send us the wrong size or the wrong color and we cannot return it. Well, you can even return it, but sometimes the return policies, they're so confusing and so, you know, uh, difficult that it's not really not worth returning it because of the cost that you may have to pay for, I don't know, shipping and so on. Just remember that we should avoid the we, our feet, we have to, to buy ourselves. Okay, so consumers, clients. Ah, very good, Crystal. Decrease jobs and social interaction, definitely. But once again, so these are two points. Jobs is one and social interaction is another. So two separate points here. Good. I had not thought of the the jobs. I had thought of delivery problems and addiction. That's a very good point to bring. So let's see the paragraph sample. So this is the paragraph sample. There are how so this is the second body paragraph. There are, however, also some negative consequences of this shift in shopping habits. One, so avoiding firstly and so on, is the, need, the rise in needless consumerism. Since it is now so simple and cheap to shop from home, people tend to buy products that they do not need and will probably throw out quickly, meaning wasted money. So here, the effect, what is the impact? Wasted money as well as a surge in rubbish and plastic packaging, which damaged the environment. The other drawback, so instead of using furthermore, moreover, of online shopping is the impact on small businesses. Now that customers can shop from major retailers, such as Meyer or Woolworths online, smaller boutiques and stores who cannot afford to price match or advertise are often left without any customers. So, Two points, you can see that the first sentence here is the point and explain the drawback and the impact on small businesses, then example with effect. So putting, and here, using the who to extend your sentence to, to be able to add the impact. So the example is Woolworths and Meyer, and then what is the effect of this? Well they will be left without any customers. So all in one sentence, two points or two you know, ideas together in one sentence so that you can present, support, and extend with two sentences because it's a double idea paragraph. When I send you this, you will have all of these links that when you click, you will be able to, to access. So toolkits, a video, some, the methods video, everything will be here. List of common errors. This is really important to work with students. 
teaching them how to, let me just open this to show you. I'm online, I can't open it. Let me open it and then bring it up. I'll have to check this hyperlink because it's really not opening, but I will show you the list and I'll check the hyperlink be before I send it over to you guys. But this is the content that you will see. When the hyperlink works, it will lead you to this. It will lead you to this, but I'll have to check that hyperlink to be sure. So these are the most common mistakes that we have listed when we correct essays, not necessarily in this order, but in order for the student to know his weaknesses, when you correct, at the end of the correction, the student should, you should encourage the student to list his most common, you know, his mistakes and, and then can uh, send additional material or guide them where they can get material to learn a little bit more about punctuation or a little bit more about verb tenses and so on. So this list is what will pop up there for you. I will check the hyperlinks before I send this these slides over to you guys. Okay. Okay, so I can see here crystal negative, so on positive points reduces the environment impact. Okay, yeah, because of the footprint, right? That's your idea. And more selection of products available, great. So overall, the concept here is the, the paragraph structures of single and double ideas, which naturally by using them, you will incorporate the list of, 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 uh, of elements needed for the band descriptors, present, support, and extend. Okay, so that's the main. Uh, I also encourage students to work with analyzing the prompt carefully. So analyze the prompt, take a few minutes, identify the two, if it's discussed both views, identify the two views, you know, reinforce that the writer's opinion is in the second view. Uh, when I'm teaching IELTS, there are eight different essay types, in fact. So, what do I point out to students? Let me just bring this up for you guys. That in order to be really prepared for an IELTS, think with me and let's see if you agree with me. If there are eight different types of essays, they should have the opportunity to write at least two of each before the test. One, which most likely they will have more mistakes. And then a second one, of also, let's suppose, agree, disagree. So if you consider that they have to write around two of each, it's at least 16 writings that they need to get feedback on, on top of it. Because it's useless to just write and not get feedback. And only an IELTS specialist can, can you know, adjust with the band descriptors. A very good English teacher will know the grammar that's wrong. But an, an IELTS specialist will know the mechanical markers, We'll know about vocabulary variety. We'll know about the different sentence structures that should be added and where. So where can you add an if? So that's why an IELTS specialist is the guarantee for the student to be well prepared. If the student is taking academic IELTS, think with me. 
eight essays and eight academic writings there are. Bar chart, line chart, pie chart, double chart, process, diagram. So it's like around 32 writings the students will have to do before being really prepared for an IELTS. It's, it's high demand. Of course, if they're aiming, we're talking about a seven or an eight. If they're aiming for a six, the demands are lowered. More mistakes are accepted. But if we're talking seven plus, a lot, there's a lot to take into consideration for scoring. Okay. So you will see that my slides, they're nominated with E2 language because I teach at E2 language as an IELTS specialist. And a lot of the resources that I will share with you, they come from E2. They're all available online. So it's not like uh, if, you, if you go there. And if you wish, you can register even as a free student and access a lot, a lot of special material that you don't even have to pay for. You just E2 language, a free registration and you will have a lot available already, okay? For IELTS, TOEFL, PTE, OET, all those big tests. But IELTS is the big flow. So before we go, are there any additional questions that I can help you? So I have your email, uh, Hussein. Would anybody else like me to follow up, to follow these, this material, please put the email because I'll, then I'll do one big email, a group email, and send everything. I'll check the links before that. Hey, Crystal, Dorothy, I have you guys here. I have to copy this before I, I shut down, or else I won't find these emails again. I'm not sure if Madikan is hearing us because sometimes her connection falls. So I'll send, I'll forward the assignments and this material. I'll do it in separate emails so it doesn't jumble up too much. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. I hope it was helpful the session today. Next week, uh, apparently, Dave, Daniel will probably be back. If not, uh, Siavash has asked me to work with a topic of, I think it's online teaching. So if not, we'll be together. Hopefully, Daniel will be feeling better. Okay. Take care, guys. And let me know if you have any questions. I'll just re I'll put my email here again, just to be sure that if you have any questions, you can contact me. If you wish to discuss any points about the paper. Okay. Amadi, I see your email here. Okay. I will add you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Take care now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good job. Goodbye. Goodbye.